27. Yeah, I decided to quit my fu fucking job. <laughs> I'm almost 30. I, you know, kind of. I jack off every day, blah, blah, blah. You know, small dick. Okay, now, maybe some of, I think, this video's viewers know I'm recognized as a hentai sensei. In Japan, hentai means power, not anime power. But of course, first, I didn't want to do this. I want to be a comedian YouTuber. British comedians approached me and said, Hey, Meshira, you know Japanese. You should talk about your real culture. What is my real culture? And they said, Or hentai things. I asked them, what is tentacle porn? They showed me a video. Do you guys know tentacle porn? Yeah. yeah. I know some of them. That's why you came here. So I watched. I was surprised because a cute Japanese anime girl was fucking an octopus. What the fuck? I asked them, is this my culture? And they said, Yes, hentai is your real culture. <laughs> so guys, thank you for wanting to my culture. <laughs> but now, actually, I like tentacle porn. <laughs> Sorry guys. But uh, in Japan, I have to search for it in English. Because in Japan, we just say anime. <laughs> <laughs> Comedian like uh, Trevor Noor, like a famous kind of YouTube comedian. Trevor Noor is not a YouTuber, but you know, like uh, his stuff, his jokes. But of course, even though I uploaded many stand-up comedy videos, no one watched it, of course. No one watched no famous, you know, weird Japanese accent comedian, so. But one video got a good views at that time, two, more than two years ago. Talked about sex industry in Japan with my Japanese friends in English. That that video, only that video had good view. And then I checked YouTube uh, analytics and I realized all my viewers and subscribers came from sexual world <laughs> to my channel. Then, you know, at that time, corona, coronavirus came to Japan all over the world and then I couldn't do live stand-up show anymore. At that time, I organized stand-up comedy show for foreign tourists, and then I had a one-hour show, introduced Japanese culture using comedy. I got the money, and then like sometimes I do tours. I did tours, but I couldn't do that. Maybe I, I had to get money from YouTube. But at that time, I just had a 300 subscribers, or 400 subscribers. I need a strategy. Yeah, then I decided. To be a hentai sensei. <laughs> uh, my stage name is Meshida. I believe I'm a comedian. So, but in Japan, people call me an emperor. <laughs> I have been doing stand-up comedy in English almost 10 years now. Now I have my own YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, since when I was a kid, I love comedy. First, of course, I grew up in Japan. I love Japanese comedy. Uh, but when I was a university student. I started watching English comedy to study English. Then I realized uh, English comedy is interesting and funny, especially British humor. Because in Japan, I love Japanese comedy, but when it comes to sarcasm, compared to Western countries, our comedy mm, don't have many sarcastic jokes. At that time, I watched Little Britain, like a sketch comedy. It's a very brutal joke. Make, make, make fun of everything. Like uh, disabled people, gays, lesbians, and then serious problem, with taboo things. I was surprised. What the fuck is you know? In Japan, I have never ever watched those kind of brutal jokes. Then I realized I love this humor. But in Japan, we can do that on TV shows or public. You know, if we want to be a famous or successful comedian, you can you cannot say that. Then, oh, I should do comedy in English, even though. I couldn't speak English at all when I was 20 or 21, still, but uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I started uh, doing comedy in English. Yeah. After graduating from college, I started working as an employee, like a typical Japanese. I worked 
at internet company almost for five years. So then uh, I, at the same time, I did a comedy just like a once or twice a week, you know, as my hobby. But six years ago, when I was 27, yeah, I decided to quit my fu fucking job. <laughs> and I went to the UK to do comedy. I stayed there almost one year. It was amazing. I, I was still 20, 27. I joined the comedy festival in Edinburgh. I met a lot of uh, good comedian friends. And then they taught me a lot. And I learned a lot. Almost every night I performed there. Yeah. So I realized at that time, I, I thought, I had to speak English like a more fluent, like a good accent. So I was struggling. But many British comedians' friends said, "Oh, you are Japanese. English is shit, but amazing as a comedian." <laughs> so I decided to keep having this accent, you know. Yeah. Even though I try to change, I can't. You know? <laughs> My generation. I'm 33 years old. I'm not. I'm not sure now, young generation, what kind of English education they have. But our generation, we didn't have a speaking class. English is just one of the subjects, you know, same as history. After the test, we forgot everything. <laughs> I have never uh, met foreigners because I, I was living in suburb in Tokyo. Yeah. 98% of the population are Japanese. And we think foreigners as area. You know, they speak different language, they behave weird. So I think Pornia is like a kind of totally different species. <laughs> uh, I went to the UK to study English. At that time, my English skill was shit, like, like, like now. So my English level was bad. And my class was not high level class. On that point, I learned a lot of things from Spanish people. They have a confidence, you know, even though their English is fucking shit. You know? <laughs> like a kind of attitude or like a how to speak English gave me confidence. Oh, even though they don't know the grammar, if they have confidence and then speak, we, we can speak. Yeah, that was a good experience for me. Yeah. I really enjoy talking with them. First, I was afraid of talking with them because, you know, we grew up very different culture. I'm from Japan. I don't know, you know, as a country's culture. But when I met them, we are the same, just, just people, you know, <laughs> human. <laughs> yeah, I realized here in Japan, I call foreigners gaijin, but when I went to the UK, I was a gaijin, you know. I came back to Tokyo. I realized, because when I was in the UK, many my foreign friends asked me about Japan. You know, what is Japan's politics? What is Japan's history? Blah, blah, blah. But actually, I pretend to know that but I didn't know I realized I have I have to learn you know so before I just focused on making fun of Japanese culture and they're living in Japan and then all my audience are expats or foreigners who are living here they know Japan a lot you know they know our Japanese culture you know local things local supermarkets size area and I can make fun of that you know people can understand it so actually Every time I make fun of Japan, life in Japan, and the people could connect to it. But when I went to the UK, some people don't know what is Japan. Nihao, it's a Chinese, fuck off, something like that. So I have to change my script. But of course, if I say kind of look down on British culture or like a very offensive, people hate me, do self deprecating jokes. You know? For us, I'm single, I'm almost 30, I, you know. Kind of, I jack off every day, blah blah blah, you know, small dick, funny, there. But you guys also fucking weird, you know, something like that. That's my style, and I learned that. So, yeah. Uh, recently in the Academy Hour, like uh, Will Smith hit the Chris Lock. He got angry because Chris Lock made, made fun of his wife. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Actually, in Japan, first, uh, here in Japan, if people hits the first, it, it all, always, even though there is some reasons, always people who hits the first, they are arrested. Yeah. In the bar, when Japanese people, Japanese guys start fighting, always you say, hey, come on, come on, you know? <laughs> they just like, uh, how can I say, 
uh, avoid hitting first. They just like uh, look at each other and then throw ball. Hey, come on, come on. Then someone hit. Oh, oh, you hit me, you know. Oh, it's all fucking your fault, you know. Will Smith in Japan, in that situation, uh, Will Smith and Chris Lock look at each other and like, come on, come on, come on. You know? <laughs> and then, yeah. Before I went to the UK, I performed in Tokyo. In Tokyo, we have a, a small English uh, stand up community. And one British guy, before I went to the UK, he told me, I think your sense of humor won't be work in the UK. He said that to me, and I was so shocked because he's a funny guy. And then, oh, maybe uh, my jokes won't be work in the UK. But uh, of course, first it was quite difficult to make British people laugh. So one night, so I performed at midnight show, and then it was who, and I performed ten minutes, and all my jokes worked at that time. Then I killed audience. People recognize me as a funny guy. At that night, I was so happy. I drank a lot. Uh, hey guys, uh, I told you guys I'm a hentai sensei, but now I upload wholesome videos, like a culture video. So people start recognizing me as a comedian. So if you want to know real Japanese culture, please subscribe to my channel. Of course, if you want to know more hentai things, please subscribe. So I have a, not only a YouTube, but also Patreon. So please support me so, because most of my most I think most of my popular videos include sexual stuff so far. So I mean, YouTube's are very childish, and then <laughs> they restricted from advertising on my videos. So I need your support if you want to know more about real Japan. So please support me. Thank you.